honorable and respected brothers and elders. This ummah has been taught such things. And one of the things which has been stressed on very big within our deen are the rights of other people. The huquq al-ibad. You have huquq Allah and huquq al-ibad. You have the rights of people and then you have the rights of individuals. If you want to quantify it, by way of looking into sort of books, you'll see that, for example, one very popular book which is read in the alim class when you become a Maulana, a Maulvi, a scholar, is one study, one book is called Hidayah. So it's a comparative fiqh book. Using, using that as an example, you have split into four big, big volumes. One volume is Hukukullah, meaning Salah, fasting, Zakat, Hajj, and so on. And the rest of the three volumes are in relation to huquq al-ibad, how to get married, what are the issues of talaq, business dealings, financial transactions, and all of this stuff. Our deen put emphasis on the dealings with people. Our deen put emphasis on how you are supposed to deal with another person. Whenever you always, Islam has taught us this thing, that if you want to see how you're acting with someone, put yourself in their shoes. So how you're talking to somebody else, would you like it, someone to address you in the same way? Let's just say you make an error. You've got two types of people. One people say, the Mawlana Shaykh Sallam will say, Bhai, khuda ka khawf karo. Look at what you're doing. And slant him and, and slate him in public. <coughs> and other people think, Nini, the approach should be a bit more of a softer one. So you have these mixed emotions. Put that to the side for a second. I ask you, if you did something wrong in society, how do you want to be addressed? How do you want to be dealt with? So you see, this is what our deen emphasized, stressed, and encouraged. To always put yourself in the position of other people. One of the things which we covered last week, and carrying on from there, is about the dealings of people when it comes to things of hasad, jealousy, and envy. Carrying on from there, why do people... I'm, I'm tying this other new topic in, and that is called backbiting and ghibat. Why does this happen? It happens generally because people are jealous of another person. They have they harbor anger. Oh, sorry, beg your pardon. This was the week before last. That and anger combined. So last week anger and then hasad. Generally, people feel anger towards someone, hasad towards someone, jealousy towards someone. They feel a sense of pride over somebody, and that encourages them or makes them sometimes or a lot of the times start backbiting about another person. Now, let's put this to let's try and understand. By brother, do you understand Urdu? Sorry? Do you understand Urdu? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But what is ghibat? But ghibat kya hai? If backbiting, so what is it defined as? In Arabic we say, ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكْ بِمَا يَكْرَى ذِكْرُكَ أَخَاكْ بِمَا يَكْرَى Talking about your fellow Muslim brother in, or sister in such a way that if he or she were to hear that, they would become offended. They would dislike it. Even if it's true. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said this to the Sahaba and they mentioned وَإِنْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا أَقُولُ O Prophet of Allah, if what I say, what if it's true? So we have one Musalli brother, one Muslim brother, and on the weekend, bichara, he likes to do a bit of najai stuff. And I say, bhai, aapko nahi pata? Ahmed bhai drinks alcohol on the weekend. Ahmed bhai was with this girl. This boy was with... The, I started using the name Ahmed, but just give me an example, ma'adala. I'm just, you know... I'm just giving an example by way of example. Even though that's true, the fact that he will dislike that when he hears it's still a ghibat. So we shouldn't think it, no, no, bad hui, I see. It's, that's exactly what happened. Even if it happened, it had nothing to do with the likes of you and I. Because Allah judges, not you and me. Because that's hukukullah. If I say to you, by Ahmed Bay doesn't read namaz. What's it got to do with me? That's Allah to judge. I mean, doesn't keep roza, man. Doesn't even fast, bro. You get me? Man doesn't even keep roza. What's that got to do with me? Because that's between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I'm not the hag, hakim. I'm not the leader. I'm not the judge. Allah wa ta'ala is the judge. And that's why it doesn't give us the right to judge people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, أَيُحِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَن يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا فَكَرِهْتُمُهُ would anybody of you like to eat the dead flesh of his brother? 
you dislike it. Now look here. Allah mentioned ghibat, saying it's like eating the flesh of your dead Muslim brother. Dead Muslim brother. Why dead? It's because a dead person has no... Can't, he can't push it away. If you do some zulm to this person who's dead, he can't make difa of himself. And also he becomes unaware. Because a dead person, as he is unable, he's also unaware. So we are... And also another thing... When a person departs from this world and we do some zulm to them, when a person dies, the chances of us tying the loose ends, asking for mafi, talafi, mafi, shafi, whatever you want to call it, it becomes mahal and impossible because the person's gone and dead. So this is where Allah to bring out the, 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 the dislike, the sensitivity, the disgrace of such an act, He gives tashbih with it. It's like you're eating your dead Muslim brother's flesh. Would you like to do that? No. You dislike it, so why do it? It comes a thing, Allah ma for my right. Because I'm, why do we have to mention this? This is what we unfortunately have in our gatherings. And it might be just a passing comment. I saw such and such a person. We just say it's so laid back and by it. I am not there to judge. Allah is to judge. I have no right in looking down upon people because filhal, I don't know really, will I even depart from this dunya with iman or not? Only Allah knows. I can be hopeful that Allah will take me from this world with iman, but I can't say for sure. I've got to be hopeful, bus. I can't say, gee, met the pakka, I'm going with iman, bhai. What guarantee do you have? What guarantee do I have? So that's why we should never look down upon other individuals. Thing is here is that now the sensitivity is such is that if a person, God forbid, did this, and you are also involved and you don't stop that individual, you are an accomplice in that guna as well. That's the, also the problem. You can say, You didn't stop the geezer from talking that nonsense, right? You didn't intervene and tell that brother not to say that. So you're also an accomplice within that particular thing. So it's like some people say, I was just sitting there and I, you know, I'm not involved. And if this was someone was talking about your father, would you have interrupted? If someone was talking about your daughter, your mother, would you have interrupted? Because you look down upon him. Why should I care? He is like that. So the fact is, we are an accomplice because we didn't stick up for that individual. This is why also we are also sharik in that guna. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sahabi, he said, Ya Rasulullah, in kana fi ma'akul, what if that thing which I talk about my brother is in him? He or she does that. In kana fi ma taqul faqad yaghdabda, wa in lam takun fi ma taqul faqad bahadda. If you, what you say about that person is true, then you've made ghibat of that individual. But if you made up a lie, and it's false, it's not true. It's bohdan, which is even worse than ghibat, because it's not even true. It's a complete lie and a complete load of nonsense. And unfortunately, we, women are a bit more tears when it comes to this when in, in, in comparison to men. Their gatherings, Allah, Rehm, Kareh, always people, buraya, and talking about people's business all the time. You see, if we're in a gathering, if we're people of haq, we should say to people, Bay, please leave it, man. We don't know the brother. Leave it. It's between him and Allah. Chori, I'm a deep It's between him and Allah. But we don't do that. We rather become an accomplice. We are, Acha, Acha, oh, yaar, maybe all girls from easy, yaar. I, yeah, I also heard that as well. What do we put more fuel on the fire? So this is, Allah Ta'ala didn't create us for this. Allah Ta'ala created us to be upright individuals, to be people of the haq. We don't look at anything else. We look at what's right. Now, check this out. <coughs> Khudana khasta if you did he with somebody, how do you get the mafi talafi? How do you actually settle the score? There's two possibilities. Either the person's alive or he's dead. Let's assume they're alive. Now let's just use an example. Person A and person B, they talk about person C. You understand in the scenario, yeah? So these two people are talking about this person. Person A says to person B, Yaar, that bandha drinks alcohol, he's a sharabi. He's such a good nigar. I saw him raving in the local club, bro. He had a beanie in his arm. He was just mashing it up. Okay, gee, he did wrong. That's between him and Allah. That person should say to person B, you know, brother, you know, last week I said to you about person C. I'm wrong. I shouldn't say that. I have no right to judge him. May Allah forgive me for what I said. He's probably not like that at all. And if it is, it's between him and Allah. You've, re- un- you've undone the ghibat which you've said. Do you understand? But again, you've gone back on your tracks. So that's what, uh, you kind of, then if you ask Allah for forgiveness, inshallah Allah will forgive. But then what if that per- that's if he doesn't know that you spoke about him. What if he finds out you did speak about him? Then what do you do? 
Okay, I heard okay, two people are speaking about me. How does that person now come and ask? How does he, he make the, the... Because in this instance, person C was unaware. He didn't know. Okay, someone was talking about me. If he becomes aware, that person has to now say to person B, okay, I did wrong. And then go to person C and say, look, you know, Karna, I did mention something about you in public and I'm just asking for your forgiveness. If that person forgives from his heart, one thing is You don't know what is in that person's heart. He could just say, No, no, brother, Alhamdulillah, forgive him for Allah. Which he is saying to himself, Putur, Jahannam to Taki. I'm going to make sure on the day of judgment you get your badra. So we don't know. That's why it's delicate. Because if he does know that, if he doesn't feel that he wants to forgive, how the heck are we going to get forgiveness out of that geezer now? So that's why it means that that person is to go to person B and say, Bayi, look, you know what I said about that person? Wallahi, he was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. I'm, I'm wrong. He's actually a good person. Maybe it's just my emotions. Then go to person C if he heard and say, Bayi, you know, please, I made a mistake. And I said something wrong. by maaf karna for the sake of Allah. Lekin Allah rahim kare. We are so mutakabbir, right? It doesn't allow us to. We say, Ya man, why should I, man, it's called Kiyonja, why should I go to him? Over there, ya man, who is he big or am I? So we play that card. What we don't realize, we're trying to play the God card here. We're trying to think we're better than other people. This is when Allah's ghadab comes down and Allah doesn't forgive. Allah says, Ulta, you do wrong, and then you ulta become Badmash with it as well. So there's a double nuksan here. That's why we're taught to have a bit of ajizi, a bit of humility, a bit of humbleness. When you make a mistake, accept you made a mistake. Khalas, you made a mistake, it's, you're human. I've made mistakes, you made mistakes. Like to admit you've done the mistake is half of the, half of the correction. My, my, right? okay, this is what I'm trying to say. We're not too big to ask people for forgiveness, number one. Secondly, when you make a mistake, if you admit that you're wrong and just ask for a humble apology, nine times out of ten, that person will forgive you, unless he himself is so besharam that he's got it in his heart, that he just has enmity against anybody. In that case, that person will live a sad life because he's constantly at enmity with himself and others. However, now the problem is that let's just say that person did know you did give it about them and died. And you never asked for forgiveness. The bottom line is, there is no way of asking forgiveness from that person from that end to the day of judgment. There is just no way. You can't ask for forgiveness from someone who's dead. So ulama mentioned, there's only one possibility where you can do. You can keep on making dua for that person, maybe give some sadqa on their behalf, do something, until your heart is mutmain. Okay, I'm sure he would have forgiven me by now. But you don't know, because your anger might be different from my anger. My anger might be, nah, bruv, that took the mick. I had this as an imam, unfortunately. A lot of people, some guy made up some stuff and made up a bohtan. And wallahi, it shook me so much that I had nafrat even to go to the masjid. So I can tell you on a personal scale that, on a personal level, that when people make up things and lies, if it's something which I did, fair enough, I get offended. But if you make up a lie, ajeeb, subhanahu, it's bohtan, it's not even fair, you didn't even do that. So I'm saying that as a personal experience, I've also experienced this as well. But may Allah save us as a community, if we don't rid this from ourselves, it becomes a problem. If you have a problem with somebody, brother, be a man, be a man, go up to that person and say, bro, I need to chat to you a bit, man. And just, just mean we need to have a chat. And be open and say, look, you offended me when you said this. If that person's a bear sharam, he'll turn around and say, I don't care. But if he's any decent insan, he'll say, do you know, brother? I'm sorry, man. Forgive me for the sake of Allah. That is more izzad in the sight of Allah than being mutakabir and saying, who are you? And ultimately, in the long run, you will become zaleel. But if a person learns to forgive and says, nay, ya raqi, when I think I'm wrong, so I ask for forgiveness. Wallah, Allah will give you izzat in the sight of the people and you will also be at ease and peace with yourself. So khair, let's finish off on this because I've taken two minutes more than what I should have. May Allah guide us and help us inshallah. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil